What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Cesar with Cesar Gets Crypto, and we are talking about Jesus Coin today, doing our little Christmas Eve uh, update. Actually, on this chart, it is Christmas Day, technically. Today is the day of the burn. This candle will be the day of the burn. So will we see immaculate growth today or will we continue to slip? Will we continue to move down? Because we are we are a sizable bit down. Yesterday we closed the day um, negative 11.7%. And at one point, I think we were down 23% on the day. Let me see um, real quick here. I mean, overall, top to bottom, near high to near low is almost 37% of a loss. It's pretty big, man. It's a lot. It's definitely a lot. But uh, to be completely fair, What's nice about this is that we're finding support on a previous area of resistance. If that's not the area, then maybe on the closing basis here, you know, same thing. We're finding support in this area of previous resistance. So if we look at this on a four hour, I feel like it's a little bit more easy to uh, to disseminate. Um, looking at it here, right, we had our nice like parabolic move up and then broke down and then we kind of settled um, in this horizontal channel more or less for you know a couple weeks right and we've actually broken out of that we even found a little bit of resistance as like we consolidated right here and then broke out found support in this area found support again it would, it's very crucial you guys it's very very crucial and I mean the, the sooner the better but but hopefully sooner than later that we get a positive reaction off of this level because if we continue to slip like this it's not gonna look good it's really not gonna look good and if we zoom out what that would mean is this not so conventional double top looking pattern could in fact be a double top and we could slip all the way down to areas that are down here in this previous price range down here in this previous price range we could even go lower than that it is it is completely possible that's on the table if you if you take let's delete all these real quick if you take the low which i think is right there to this high, the all-time high. The 236 is all the way down there at 60218, right? We found support on that a few times. From the current price, that would be a markdown of about 50% from here, and we're already down, right? Likely, we would not find support in these levels as we had previously. We're, we would likely go at least to the 382, which from the current price would be another 70% loss. And it's very possible, even likely and common with coins like this that are low market cap after seeing a huge, tremendous move up like this to go all the way down to their 618, which from the current price would be about a 90% loss from the current price. And we've already, we're already somewhat significantly down from our all-time highs. So again... It's very, very, very critical that we resume moving forward. Um, besides the, uh, the slip that we had yesterday, you know, that's a little bit of a concern. What's nice is that we do have this bullish engulfing candle here on the four hour that promoted nothing afterwards. So it's nice, but it's also like it didn't it didn't really do anything for us other than this little four hour stint. If anything, this this might have been a secondary opportunity for people to sell who didn't get to sell up here and that could just prompt us for uh, for lower price action but hopefully not um what was i going to say i was going to say something man what was it come on now hmm oh yeah something that's not so good is that the Heiken Ashi here, yesterday it flipped red. Flipped red. We actually have a red day on the Heiken Ashi, and that's something that any time throughout really the history of this thing, as we've moved up, as we've had these consolidation phases and then expanded, consolidated, expanded, consolidated, expanded, whatever, any time after we have seen a red day after an expansion phase, after consolidation, we've gone down, you know, a sizable bit. Moved up, red, went down a sizable bit. And then red here, we flipped green again, but more or less moves, moved sideways, neutral. And then that was just a prelude to the inevitable downside we saw. Here, right, moved up, consolidation phase. So these little green reds, it's, it's all just consolidation. But when we really got going here, the next time that we turned red was again when we were consolidating. Here, same thing, right? So the the option or the the idea that this promotes is that we could be consolidating here which 
maybe we are, maybe we aren't. You know, I feel like we've kind of been consolidating for the past few days already. So this could just be like a random, you know, the Heikinashi, generally speaking, it works this way, right? Where, where whenever it's red, this would imply a new trend is taking place or like the uptrend is done and then now we're going lower. And right now off of this like kind of double top look, this really is not a good look. This is not a good situation to be in. So really what we need to do is pronto very soon like today or tomorrow we we need to flip this green we need to see some of the price action starting to look more bullish otherwise guys this this is not going to be good this is going to be the exact opposite of what we were expecting uh jesus coin to do for christmas and that's possible man i know i know a lot of people myself included expected it to be a lot higher than it is now um but we can be wrong we can be wrong, you know. This this is uh, this is a cryptocurrency, right? Even with the name Jesus, it's it's still a cryptocurrency. And generally speaking, when it comes to risk on assets or assets, period, um, when something when when the general population is expecting something to increase in price, you generally get actually a a pullback. It's only when people are worried that it's going to go to zero that's when you bottom. That's when you start to move higher. Um, but yeah, man. You know, a lot of you have been telling me that, that this thing is different and that it's going to go up way, way high by the burn or after the burn or whatever. It doesn't doesn't need to follow the normal rules because it's Jesus coin. Um, but I had this thought, and I don't think I said it yesterday, but basically when we were up here, I was like, you guys are saying that now as it looks like we're about to break all-time highs. But I would wonder what would happen if we dropped, you know, if we started to move down if that sentiment would change. And I've actually gotten a few people who have said they were going to sell the next time it goes up. So maybe they sold here, maybe they're still waiting, whatever. Um, but the sentiment from here, from being like absurdly bullish has changed a lot, like very, very quickly um, to worrisome, right? And there's all the reason for worry, but I'm just saying like this, the whole idea that Jesus coin is different from any other crypto out there. It might be different in name, but in respects to speculative assets, it's the exact same as any other asset because it has us human beings with our like-minded psychology affecting the price of this thing. When it goes down, we get scared. When it goes up, we get greedy. So as soon as it's up here, you know, everybody's greedy. Like, I'm not going to sell. No way am I going to sell. But now that we've slipped just a little bit, we've slipped just a little bit, finding support on a previous area of resistance, mind you, a very bullish thing, actually. Now there's more bears, which, you know, maybe it's justified, maybe it's not. It just, it depends, you know, on what the outcome is. And, and we're, we're just waiting for that. So I hope I didn't drone on there. I hope that that makes sense. I didn't lose anybody. But uh, long story short, I'm still optimistic. I'm definitely hopeful for this thing. I do think that we're finding support on a previous area of resistance. Um... For anybody that sold, that got shooken out of this, you know, hopefully we don't just skyrocket and then you FOMO in at the top. If we do, for anybody that has sold, what I would recommend is if it ends up moving up like this, just stay away from it. Stay away from it because it's inevitable before it does probably even go back to lower prices than it is now. Um, but this, this, you know, from what was expected to be a certainty is kind of becoming an if at this point. Not even kind of, like very much becoming an if at this point because this... This non-conventional double top that we have here, it's starting to become somewhat of a threat. And this, to me, it, do, it really doesn't look like a double top. But <laughs> if you move down, it'll look a lot more like a double top, that's for sure. Um, looking at the daily RSI, we were overbought and we got out of the overbought zone, got back into it, and now we're out of it. This is kind of uncharted waters compared to anything else that we've seen. I will say, just, just for what it is, this is not a good look in the RSI. We are out of the bullish area of control. We're below the 60 now. On the bright side, we still have one whole day left to go. We're about, let's see, we're about four and a half hours into the day. So that would mean that we have 19 and a half hours left. If this day can close green, if, if it can close green, what it's going to look like is, you see where this little pivot is right here, right? Like this is where the RSI is, that's that's where the previous day closed. If this day can close green, it's gonna look like we're bouncing right off of this 60 level. 
which would actually be very, very bullish. Bouncing off of the bullish area control is, is not a bad thing at all. So right now, while things look a little bit bleak and we are out of the bullish area of control, this part of the RSI is still pivoting. Until the day closes, um, we don't know where it is. So let's let's hope that today does close green. Let's hope that not only does it close green, but like we, we just smashed through yesterday. Because right now what we're getting is we're getting some indecisive price action, right? We're getting wicks to the top, wicks to the bottom. We had a bullish engulfing candle followed by a bearish engulfing candle. Um, let's get another, let, let's have the bulls answer this and get us a bullish engulfing candle or at least something that gives back most of these losses. You know, the bright side to yesterday is that most of this downside was a wick. A lot of it got eaten up, but we've seen days like that before and then it just promoted a kind of longer drawn out consolidation phase. So hopefully hopefully we're not in that. Hopefully things are getting going. I really don't, you know, all this to say, all the all the like super critical um, real like analysis aside, this to me just doesn't, it doesn't feel like a top man. Like it really, this kind of double top action, if it was a double top, we wouldn't have had all these days. Like right, that maybe this day, like it would have been lower, but it would have been sooner. I don't think that we would have had these like like three days of just moving sideways um, still, right? Or like this wouldn't have been given back. It would have just dropped and we probably would have dropped more. But really what we're doing is we're kind of, we're consolidating after the breakout, which is fairly normal whenever we see continuation upwards. So I am still hopeful that we're gonna see prices go up. Um, we're kind of at that that unfaithful place right now, you guys, where the people who who have sold or who are thinking about selling, this is the time to do it, right? And then... If you're proven wrong and it goes up, then you don't touch it. If you're proven right and it goes down, you still don't touch it and you wait because it's going to be anybody who didn't sell here, you better not sell at lower prices, man, because you never know with something like this if it could, you know, it could move down, it could have a flash crash and then move all the way back up to prices that are higher than this, still form a lower high. That, that was not a straight line at all. Um, still form like a lower high. That's You get what I'm trying to say. And then still turn around. So... So if we are going down, it's not going to get easier from here. The, the best case scenario really would be that we're just we're, we continue to go up so that it, uh, I don't know, so so that we're not in the red, I guess. I don't know, man. Um, let's see. Let's see here. Somewhat of an area that we would find support on the RSI. Even if we close down here, it's not too bad, but I, I really would like to see a bounce off of the 60 four hour does look weak it does look pretty weak you know this this rejection off the overbought zone matched with a rejection off of the 50 it looks like a rejection at least right now um that's not a good look though we are pretty reluctant to get below this level here which which is nice that's like the kind of uh hope that that i'm leaning on personally um with the way this RSI looks, I would expect that we want to see some oversold territory. That could mean that lower prices are in store, you know, for the next uh, few candles, you know, maybe even toward the end of the day, maybe leading right up to the burn. We could be going down and then maybe at the end of the day, we see a nice spike up or something like that. But but the four hour is not looking too encouraging. The daily still has hope. The weekly, you know, it's, it's a very new chart, so there's really not a whole lot to go off of. But the four hour is is throwing a wrench in the operations right now one hour also looks weak doesn't look too good you're getting all these bullish engulfing candles matched by bearish engulfing candles like i'd be curious i'd really just like to see for once throughout this whole range some follow through to the upside if we can get that then it'll definitely look like what it is which is a breakout a bit of consolidation and then the next phase of that breakout and hopefully that takes us to the promised land at the five zeros mark. And that's that's really all I got to say, guys. I don't know if I have anything else that I want to add to this. Um, you know, again, there there is hope. There are good things going on still, even with this drop. Um, yes, even this drop itself, there's still good things going on. But this Heikinashi flipping red is not good. That's, that's kind of scary. The, uh, you know, RSI getting out of the overbought zone, doing different things than it's done this whole time. It's that's That's not really a good look either. Um, you know, it's, there's definitely a question mark right now, but just in my personal opinion, from my experience with charts, whatever that's worth, if it's worth anything at all, this does not look like a double top to me. So I wouldn't expect the, uh, the movement that we'd see with the double top, but 
who cares what I think, man? This thing can do whatever it wants, that's for sure. And especially if, you know, if the price starts moving down and all these people up here that were saying they would, they're not going to sell, they're going to hold till like the whole cycle's done, um, you're going to be tested. You're going to be tested. And while, while most people want to think that they would pass tests, most, most people in this game, whenever, whenever uh, emotions take over, whenever price starts to really move down, we, we kind of fail those tests and we panic sell. That's why, you know, it's a term. Um, so I'd really be curious to see, you know, if, if we do continue to move down, <laughs> then I'm in Jesus coin for the long haul, you guys, because I'm definitely not going to uh, mess with this thing. I might just, you know, miss the opportunity to take profits up here whenever I thought it was really going to go higher. But whatever, that's OK. If we do continue to go down, we probably will see some kind of drawn out consolidation just like we did here. Um, but I do expect, you know, there's a couple of key points with that. If you're looking for this consolidation like like I am, I just think we're going to go higher first. But if we don't, um, I don't think it's going to be as long lived as this because this was kind of in a time of uncertainty with crypto, right? I mean, there were a lot of us out there who thought Bitcoin was going higher, myself included, right? Like thought like in this time that, that we were going up, we weren't a bear market anymore. But there's still a good bit of the market that was, you know, Maybe not rightfully so, but arguably so. They had points where we could still be in a bear market. That uncertainty is no longer with us. Like we're, we're undeniably at this point in a bull market for crypto. So I wouldn't expect that this next consolidation phase is going to last as long as it did here. You know, let's actually, let's see here real quick. Assuming that we're in it now. But from top here to the bottom, that was 17 weeks. Okay, 17 weeks. Top here... If we went to 17 weeks, that would put us out into March. I mean, it, we could. It's possible. It could, it could consolidate that long. That goes against with what I was just saying. But, I mean, it could. It could consolidate longer even, honestly, because before the halving, you know, um, I don't know. Though. My, my genuine assumption would be that it's not going to, to consolidate as long um, as it did before. But who am I? What am I? You know, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. Um, I don't know if I have anything else I want to add, man. One hour does not look good. I'm not a fan of the one hour RSI at all. Looks like it's in a steady downtrend. Looks like it wants to go lower, which would imply price in the very immediate term. But probably by the time most of you watch this, it'll be below where it is now, even with this bullish candle in effect. The four hour is looking weak. It also looks like it wants to go down lower. I would think that it would want to go into this oversold zone, which... The last two times we were in the oversold zone, you know, this is what we got. We got a flash move down like this, and then we got another kind of like significant move, 11% in a four-hour basis. Um, so that probably would, you know, drive prices down into these threes again, maybe down at this low point here. We could be testing this previous area of resistance as support, as we did here, but just like several times, you know, maybe, but... I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm curious. I'm not really leaning one way or another. I'm hopeful that we can go up, but it's it's very possible we could go down, guys. You know, seeing this seeing this uh, day close higher than this day here, and then we get matched with a bearish engulfing candle. It's like the bulls answer, answered here with a bullish engulfing candle, and the bears answered with a bigger bearish engulfing candle. That's not that's not encouraging at all. So. Um, let me just see real quick. Yeah, a lot. I think every single one of these wallets, maybe not this one. I forget. It's been a while since I've looked at them. But these ones, this one here and this one here, used to be at 3.9. So they've sold 200 billion tokens each a pop. Um, this one was at 3.9. This one was at 4.5. So that, that makes sense. Um, oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. See, damn. Damn. So, so that one actually was the, uh, that's the Uniswap one. That's not, that's not, this is the 3.9 one. I thought there were two 3.9 ones. This one actually hasn't sold. So this one just sold, but these ones have def definitely sold down here. Um, but man, I'm getting, I'm getting off topic here. What I'm trying to say is some of the bigger wallets have sold. I don't know about the smaller wallets. You know, you guys can answer for yourselves in the comments, but I haven't sold anything. I don't plan on selling um, until we are at new all time highs. That's when I plan on selling, but you know, I guess I guess at this point we're just waiting to see what the burn does. Does it promote price action to grow um, last minute, or is it an anti-pump event and we actually 
fall short of the expectation and start to move down. Um, because if we do from here, again, it's going to be a little bit more drawn out than three weeks, than two weeks, than one and a half weeks. You know, it's, it's going to be a little bit more drawn out than that. So I don't know if I've got anything else to add. I feel like I've droned on long enough. So with that, I leave you. If you like the video, leave a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Let's get going, man. Let's get, let's get the Jesus Bulls back in here and start to pump this thing because I would definitely like to see it going higher. I know a lot of us would, but the four-hour really doesn't look good. The one-hour is not too good either so don't so don't be surprised if we do go a little bit lower than we are now throughout the state but that, again that doesn't mean that we're we're dropping out just yet we have found support in a very critical area of resistance but as long as we have that we've got potential upside going for us but if we break that then then it's really this is not a good look this is a very precarious situation and i've said that really even since this bullish day here that you know we need to continue we need to continue and we're getting the exact opposite of that. So if you like the video, hit that like button. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you all for coming. And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Happy Santa Claus Day. Um, you know, regardless of what your favorite crypto or least favorite crypto is doing, um, it's still it's still a good day, good time to be around with people that matter, good people, loved ones, you know. Don't forget, don't forget like that that life exists outside of this realm of crypto. So anyways, bye bye. Adios. Take care.